what up everybody Keith again sorry these dogs are going nuts over here <laughs> Keith again MJKL Speedworks like I told y'all uh, this channel is more than just working on a car here I sit today up on the roof all right so last night when we were eating dinner I happened to notice that there was a brown spot on the ceiling so, knowing good and well what that came from is water, so <laughs> that had to be from the roof. Now, uh, being preemptive, I decided to climb on up here and just see if I could see anything in particular that was torn up or broken, because we've had some water problems here before. Well, this roof has got some age to it, and some things have been repaired on it, but things haven't. And I'll try to give you a little overview of what's going on real quick. All right, back here on the roof, there's obviously a uh, covered porch. That's what the corrugated metal you see there is. All right, right about here uh, is the sink and dishwasher and other things. And this plumbing pipe right here is the vent for the drain that runs down the wall into the septic tank. All right, the first thing I thought was, that must be what it is. Well, I got up here and these boots have been changed. These roof boots have been changed before because this is very, very pliable steel. It's plastic, but uh, it's very flexible. It's not cracked. It's not brittle. When things are up here on the roof and they sit in this southern hot heat all day, and we easily break 95 degrees every day, and uh, it bakes in the sun all freaking day long, things tend to go bad roofs get brittle then we have these ridiculous heavy rains so we put this thing through a really hard temperature cycle of hot then cold then hot then cold that's not good guys so roofs take a lot of beating here not to mention the thunderstorms that we have couple that with when we get hurricanes <laughs> we have these big ass pin oak trees which are also called water oaks but these pin oak trees have these really really fine leaves if you see here reason they call them a pin oak is because that looks like a quill pin feather. Yeah, it looks like what you bite with, you know. Whatever. Um, these branches in these pin oaks are brittle. They snap off. If you look there on the tree, you can see multiple times limbs have broken. Uh, that tree is split. It's clearly leaning. It's going to fall one day. Okay, well, cutting down trees is expensive and dangerous. So, I'll do a lot of stupid shit, but I'm not climbing in that tree. <laughs> anyway... I got up here inspecting a little bit, and then I realized it wasn't this. It wasn't this vent. It's farther. It's farther this way. Well, well there can only be so many things. Well, looking at the roof line here, for the for the record, all of this stuff should slope downward, gradually, smoothly, and evenly. Well, I notice this. If you look there, this row is not as level as the others. It's trapping a little water. Water's pulling up on the roof. That in itself is not the end of the world. All these shingles are tar and gravel. Water goes right off of them, no biggie, right? Okay, well then I got to look a little closer. And I found this. And that is the roofing nail sticking through the shingle there's another one. I got to looking closer. Hey, look, there's another one. On down farther, there's another one and another one. So, <laughs> we clearly have a water breach issue. The way these shingles are made, you can only see half of it because half of the shingle covers up each other. Right here is a tar line on this shingle. These nails here are supposed to go through said tar line on the underneath shingle. So this nail actually holds this shingle on, so forth and so forth. Well, through time, if you look, you can kind of see the waves in the roof. It's tough to see, but there's waves in the wood underneath. The wood has started to wave up through heat cycles. Nothing you can do about it. So it's kind of flattened down right here a little bit. And this hasn't. This is actually the eve 
uh, underneath the roof right here where it just falls off and goes to the ground. There's a slight eave, uh, like a foot and a half or something, 18 inches. Anyway, this hasn't settled. This has been rock solid. This part did settle. And now it's creating an issue. So there's a couple ways to go about fixing this. You could call the roofer and pay him, I don't know, a substantial amount of dollars. Or we could just do what we do. Figure it out. <laughs> so I think I think that's what I'm gonna do. Believe it or not, there's been roof leaks up here before, like I said. I'll show you this. If you look along the edge of the fireplace there, girlfriend had already told me about this, but all that right there, that's uh been sealed with roof and tar because water was actually running down the brick during a rainstorm, along the brick, onto the wood, onto the drywall, onto the roof, everything. I don't need to tell you how bad that is. You should just know that water going through the roof is not good, y'all. So, believe it or not, there was a can of roof and tar in the uh, closet in there in the little room where all my parts are for the engines and uh, for the Mustang. So, I think uh, we'll give a whirl at patching it. I should also take a second to say that if you're afraid of this stuff, don't do it. Don't be a hero. If you can't handle heights or you're afraid to fall, if you're scared of air or whatever, whatever you're scared of, if you're scared of it, don't do it. Pay somebody who can. It's not worth breaking your neck, falling down right there, never walking again, never building another motor, never driving a fast race car. So don't do it. Ask for help. Tie yourself off to that chimney right there if you need to, because I've done that before. I'm perfectly comfortable on roofs. 15 years of air conditioning work tells me that you're probably not going to fall off the roof if you use common sense. So, been on many and many and many a roof, way more dangerous than this one. So, I'm not sweating it. Alright, so here's our supplies. Blackjack roofing tar from Lowe's. A formerly used putty knife. This shit's kind of thick. And a cheap 96 cent made in second greatest country in the world, China. And no, not Canada. Alright, so this shit is extremely sticky, y'all. Be smart. I am wearing some gloves and I'm going to keep all this stuff below me so I don't walk in it. If you have any debris on the roof, now's the time to get it off because otherwise this shit sticks to everything. And I mean everything. You can see the nails there, the culprits. Nail there, nail there, nail there. And some others. We'll go down and find them all. Anyway, let's give our mixture a stir here. You see this shit is very, very, very thick. It's basically what they have left over when they make gasoline. This is at the bottom of the barrel. That's essentially what roofing tar is, in case anyone didn't know. It's a byproduct of petroleum-based fuels. This comes off the bottom of the barrel, they scrape it off, and they sell it to us. Isn't that fucking genius? So, I'm going to mix it a bit, put it on, and we'll get some afters. Alright, y'all can see what I did here. Clearly, you can see that. Uh, the trick is to kind of get it on there thick and smash it with your buddy knife. You kind of want to smash it down. I've already smoothed this one out. I'm not going to touch it anymore because I got it the way I wanted it. But uh, if you kind of smash it in, you get some room to put a knife here. You don't want to just scrape it. You kind of want to smash it. And that forces it to fill in any small gaps that there may be. Fill in them small gaps. Kind of give it a level and scrape. And it's not a beauty contest. Okay, y'all, I understand that it is not a beauty contest. It's a keep the water out of your house contest. So, that's all I care about. Alright. That's the nail right there. I still didn't get it covered the way I wanted it. So it doesn't want to stick to it because it's rusty and stuff. So we'll just keep smashing around it. Till we get it. Ah, look at there. Nice big glob right on top of it. Bet it don't go nowhere now. 
Kind of like that. Ta-da. Um, it's a little unlevel right there on that one side. So just get that a little more. Kind of like that. Sorry if you can't see him I'm on the roof unbalanced. And then I won't fall, so pardon the imperfect camera angle. That's it. There's the other one. There's that one. I found one more on the front of the house, in front of the garage. These damn dogs, y'all. Next door neighbor breeds dogs. It's wild. So there's these big labradoodles, full blooded labradoodles. They're freaking huge. And they were puppies like two months ago. They're still puppies, so. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna head to the front of the house to fix the other one. All right, y'all, so roof fixed. About to put the ladder back up here. Put it back on the work truck. So how much did this cost? It was about 16 or $17 for the roof and tar, depending on which brand you buy. Blackjack has good ratings, so whatever. This can was already purchased, but I know how much it costs. Putty knife, about $4. Uh, if you want a cheap Chinese tar brush, a dollar. Um, if you don't have a ladder, you gotta buy one, but you can usually ask a neighbor, and most of your neighbors will have a ladder if you don't have a ladder. And I'm aware that some of these other ones have them. I already have one, so no sweat. So for about 30 to 40 bucks max, you have a minor roof leak, you can fix it. So anyway, guys stick around and watch. I got plenty of other stuff we fix randomly around the house we can record too. Of course, we'll be back on the Mustang soon. I got engine parts to buy because they're all on that shelf right there. <laughs> so anyways, like, comment, subscribe, share. I'll put this in a different category. I'll still put it in the DIY section of the channel, and uh, hopefully you guys like it. So, till next time, peace.